Hey everyone, I uh, wanted to go over the uh, memory cleaner sort of thing that I had in the last video because <clears throat> in the last video I really uh, didn't cover much of it. Uh, I kind of ranted a lot about you know, what's going on. Um, <clears throat> so we'll talk about it in exactly uh, a little bit more detail. Um, and whatnot. So, first things first, we're declaring the uh, holder, uh, structure holder of our memory status. Um, this here is setting the length to the size of it, which is required. Um, void pointer, <coughs> uh, we're creating an array of void pointers, uh, 4096 of them to be exact. And then we have an integer count, uh, size t amount. This is the amount of memory that we want to try to allocate each step. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then first things first is we're gonna call global memory status ex and pass it the address of our structure. And it's gonna fill that structure with like the memory load, the total physical, available physical uh, page, <clears throat> all that good stuff. And we're saying while that state of available uh, divided by our divisor, which is like a common page size, like I said before, is greater than 512, um, which really what I said before was actually incorrect. Uh, this divisor is actually just converting from megabytes to, um, or gigabytes to megabytes. Uh, had a brain fart. Um, you're going to need to include pisapi.h, Windows at H, you know, the standard stuff. Uh, but when you include PSAPI, and that's for global memory and whatnot, you actually need to go to your options go to parameters and add it as a library in your linker. That's libpsapi.a. And even though this is labeled mingw32, very important, this program has to be compiled as a 64-bit program. Uh, you can get from winbuilds.org, uh, you click download, you get the package manager, and then it gives you a, this, and then it just you walk through it, and you can download the 64-bit um, MinGW, and it's right here. And then basically what you do is just, um, you look here, this is the actual 32-bit copy, and this is the 64-bit copy. I just replaced the folder. If I want to comp if I want to compile 64-bit, I just rename the folder of the 64 one to the actual folder name, and get and rename the 32 one and vice versa that's important um, because as we may or may not know 32 bit cannot address uh, memory beyond two gigs so it's not going to do you much good when you're trying to address memory beyond that so you can use as much as you possibly can uh, it just wouldn't work it would actually try to, and then it would pass you a valid uh, memory address, but then your uh, mem set would not find it. Um. <clears throat> so, back to this. Uh, until we have used all but 512 uh, megabytes of memory, just go ahead and uh, keep allocating this amount here, but. Uh, each time we're actually grabbing more and more, so we're, we're upping by this amount. We start at this amount, and then the first run will be that amount doubled, and then add that to it each time. <clears throat> the idea of this is to make it quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, and it's going to check the status within the loop, obviously, because here is our uh, condition that's going to use it. And then we're going to set work count equal to the return of virtual alloc which is actually the, al the address of the allocated memory 
Um, if it is not zero, so it is an address, <clears throat> we want to set that uh, memory to 90, just nopes, it's fine, for the amount, the current amount. Because if you don't reference or modify the memory, Windows won't actually use it. It'll just act as if it's not even allocated. Which is a good thing, because if a program allocates a boatload of memory but only uses half of it, you don't want it to just use it all. Um, and then it, of course, uh, increases the counter. And then it prints, like I said before, this uh, <clears throat> convoluted uh, progress bar, uh, which basically takes the available, uh, divides it down to megabytes, adds 256, which is half of your goal here. And this whole adding of point zeros and stuff is so that we can get a float um, without actually casting to a float. Um, and then <clears throat> we are going to end up eventually converting back to an int. Um, if you understand how percentages work, it's you know, 1 minus, and then it's relatively simple. So, and then at the end of that loop, so we're out of it, we've used all the memory we can, we're going to use a for loop to go through all of them and free them as memory lease. Um, which will also decommit memory if it is committed, which it is. Um, and then we empty our working set, which is also important. <laughs> um, and then it sleeps a little bit to make sure that those are all done, because it does seem to have like a little delay to it. And then we grab our new status to print out the new um, values. Um, so it is pretty simple. I'll go ahead and run it again for you. And I will actually be um, uploading this uh, code to, I always like to open the resource monitor um, when I do it. And as you see, we had 66% uh, usage when we started. Um, but yeah, I'll toss this code in the Dropbox and I'll put a link in the description for those of you that want to try it out at home. Um, it's not going to really slow down any of your programs. Uh, that's a benefit to it, but it can, like especially if it's uh, not, if it's a minimized program, it could free more than uh, you want it to because when you minimize a program in Windows, it basically calls empty working set on it to get rid of as many unused pages as possible. And so there we just gained 16% of our memory back. Uh, and this doesn't actually go through and empty the working sets of anything. It just makes Windows get memory from everywhere that it can to support our program. Um, which it does. It's just part of Windows. So we're kind of exploiting that to make it work for us. Because then our program just instantly drops itself at the end and you see the gains. Um, you don't want to run it multiple times like within 10 minutes or something like that. And a lot of times, uh, if you have multiple tabs open in win in like a browser, the tabs that aren't currently being viewed, viewed, I don't know if this is the same in Firefox or IE, but in Chrome, each tab it has a process. And if it's not in focus, it's actually had working set, it's working set emptied. So when you first click it after running this, it will kind of you know, lag a little bit while it's re-getting its cache because we basically forced Windows to get rid of all of its cached stuff. It's really not that great of a program. Um, it's, you know, as a rule, all memory cleaners or memory aligners, or memory optimizers, all of those are garbage. Um, if you need a program like that, you need to upgrade your RAM. That's, I mean, point in case. And RAM these days is what, you know, you can get eight gigs for 30 bucks or 40 bucks or something like that. So it's really not that bad. But that is that. Um, I'll go ahead and put the link to uh, where to get the 64 bit of uh, MinGW and uh, link to the download of the code in the Dropbox. Thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, do those things. Uh, 
Yeah. Enjoy.